Uh, Richie Clark is my name. Um, I'm a carpenter, joiner by trade, have been all my life. But my real passion is wood carving. Um, started wood carving about, I'd say, 18 years ago now. Uh, was given a set of uh, wood carving chisels by my then girlfriend, who's now my wife. And I still actually use them, but um, just got the bug. Well, here we are uh, in my carving shed. Although, when I had some professional tuition a few years ago, I was always told to call it a carving studio. But we're not that snobby here, so we'll call it a carving shed. This is a mallet here that I got a, a local uh, a local wood turner to make for me because when I was using those tools a lot, I, I, I just had enough weight and power uh, in the mallets that I had. Now, you wouldn't use this for very long. You'd probably only use it for two or three minutes at a time, if that. But you'll do a lot with it in 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 that time frame. Uh, that, that's actually a piece of apple, I believe. Yeah, which which is very tough wood. So that was a, a custom made mallet. You know what attracted me professionally to carpentry was, I suppose, the fact that you can just make something out of lumps of square timber, like whether it be a roof or whatever, a piece of furniture. And I always liked that idea. And then the the carving end of it really caught me because it it wasn't square uh it, you weren't making shapes you you were trying to carve birds you were trying to carve faces then i kind of rediscovered celtic mythology irish mythology especially because there's just a wealth of material like there's just so much stuff you, you'd never get through it this is a spirit pole that's what i call it what people would do would be they'd, they'd go up to maybe a big a big hardwood like an oak tree or a beech tree and they would ask the tree spirit to guide it safely through the forest. And that's where the uh, knock on wood came from actually. Touch wood for good luck. That's where it came from. It came from the tree spirit folklore and I, I love that folklore, you know. Um, well, the very first thing uh, is the story and you pick... You, maybe the character picks me, I don't know. Um, a character will kind of appeal to me immediately. The design that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of at the moment, the Sons of Turin, what happened to them appealed to me. I just get an image in my head of what he might have looked like. And, you know, uh, and um, it just starts to form from there. And then, you know, if you stick with it, then you'll start sketching. I just want to lock a face into my head. And this is Brian. He might look a bit like Bob Marley, but um, I think he's good. He's uh, he's a bit older. Like, I want him to be about 45, maybe 50. Big, strong man, but he's wise, he's clever, he's, he's not afraid of anyone. He's seen a lot of stuff, you know. And he's the oldest, wisest, bravest. This here is uh, Ikerba, who would have been the most brutish and strongest of them all, but he was a little bit... A little bit like a like a bit of an off, you know what I mean? And I'm trying to bring that through in his face. I I think I have. So that's that's basically the whole design in a nutshell there. And that's as far as I am with it. Um so the next thing will be to get to trees. And I think we have to go down and meet our tree surgeon John Lynch, who is cutting three big lime trees, six big lime trees in the local town park, and he's kindly offered to give me three of the pick of, of three of those. So uh, that's brilliant because it's great to be carving lime. I tell you, John, when, when you're taking the rest of them down, if you yeah. don't mind, cut them about eight foot, eight foot six. Yeah, eight uh, foot six. The, the three fattest ones. Yeah. You'll know yourself, sure, obviously. And that's the ones you want for that, this project. That'd be brilliant, yeah. For this project, and, uh, this time. By three nice straight logs. Yeah. That'd be brilliant. That's not bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
that's about the length you need there, John. That's roughly about eight foot. Yeah, I can, I can reduce the length myself, yeah. but it's a nice, nice clean log, isn't it? About eight foot. When we get yeah. back to the yard, we can tidy it up. Yeah. I think mythology, especially Irish mythology, well, like every country has their own mythology, obviously, uh, but uh, I think it's really important now because there are some, there are some lessons there to be learned, but it's ours, it's our mythology, and, you know, we can link it, I know it's fantasy and it's stories, but, like, it fills kids with a lot of, you know, wonder and imagination. I know it did with me, and I tell my young kids stories, like she'd say, Emily, my daughter might say, who are you carving? And I, oh, well, that's Brian, that's one of the sons of Turin. Who was he? And I tell her. And she'll sit and she'll listen. And it's a story for her. Uh, there's a saying somewhere I heard sometime called uh, the eyes have it, you know? And it, I think the, the eyes are so important because they say certain things. Like, if we look at Brian here, Brian's the oldest, as I say, he's, he's uh, the wisest. And I give him a kind of a narrowed, a narrow-eyed kind of uh, look to him because I want him to be staring at you, he's sizing you up, he's making a decision about you while he's looking at you. And if you look at Ucher here, who's the youngest and probably the most inexperienced, but yet he'd be totally fierce, fearless. I, on purpose, made him a bit more, him a bit more uh, wide-eyed because he's taking in all his surroundings, he's... He's young, he's, he's, he's soaking it all up, you know, and, and probably, you know, he'd be a bit rash. Ukraba, who's, who's just roughed out now, um, and I haven't, uh, I haven't done any fine detail yet because I'll do that with the chisels, um, but I'd probably give him a more hooded eye, a half-closed eye, if you like. Not so much Brian's staring eyes, studying you. He's not... He, Okraba isn't studying you, he's, 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 he's a bit brutish, so he doesn't think very deeply, but he's probably the best warrior of the three of them, you know, and completely fearless. Yeah, long term, like, the goal is to, to, to make my living from this type of work, uh, large and small wood carving and um, wood carving lessons. Uh, I'm hoping to get some lessons established later in the year, uh, fingers crossed. Um, but this, the log carvings, is something that I'm working towards and have been for the last few years. Each year, I notice, you just get a little rung up the ladder a bit more because y y you get one or two commissions. Uh, one or two commissions means more contacts, more people see your work, get talking about you. So it's, it's a slow process. Uh, it's, it's very much part-time at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's something that I feel very strongly about and that I definitely pursue as, yeah, if I could get there in a few years um, and to be making most of my living from it, that would be just fantastic, you know, it would be like winning the lotto to me, you know, so that's the plan anyway.